G'day guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're talking about the Warwick Jacketed Muzzle Brake. So a while back, Warwick decided to send me a jacketed muzzle brake to test, and here's what I found. It's pretty bloody good. Now, many of you may have seen these pop up, and I have seen these pop up on Facebook throughout last year, and every single time someone would post one up, there was always 10 people in the comments going, what the bloody hell is that thing? Uh, you know, I thought it'd be good to do a video on it so that you guys can see what it is, what it does, and how it's going to work. So a jacketed muzzle brake or a blast forwarding device or a sound mitigation device, there is a few different names in the industry for this very, very similar concept. Essentially what you have is a normal muzzle brake. In the instance of this one, it's a radial muzzle brake housed within a sleeve. So the muzzle brake can still work to some effect, reducing slight amounts of recoil, but the jacket itself projects your blast forward of the shooter so you're not gonna get the concussion coming back at you as the shooter and or uh, adjacent shooters. So if you're on a, a range, it's not gonna smash adjacent shooters. Some of you may have seen uh, side ported muzzle brakes smashing people at ranges and some ranges don't actually allow them because they do become quite uncomfortable for other shooters. For those of you who hunt like I do with dogs, um, usually when I shoot my dogs, well at least you know my pointer, um, is going to be at my feet. Um, so anything blast wise that's gonna go down from the gun um, is going to go straight onto my dog's head. And I really don't like that because I kind of like my dogs. When a bullet leaves the muzzle, you do get a big round shaped uh, shock wave and that's called bottle shock. On a sidebar, bottle shock affects your projectile, but we're not talking intermediate or external ballistics today, we're talking about muzzle brakes. What this will do is we'll push all of the gases and all of the concussion of the sound waves forwards, not downwards, sideways, upwards, or backwards towards you, the shooter. Now, it's not a suppressor, it doesn't change the amount of sound. All it does is push the gas and the shock wave forwards instead of sideways and backwards. That's all it's doing. It's not a suppressor, it's not a sound mitigation device, even though that's what one of the companies call it. It doesn't mitigate shit, it just moves it somewhere else. So obviously I went and tested it. Obviously being me, I didn't test it in the way that it's intended to be used. It's intended to be used on like 556, five, 2 to 3, and 300 blackout, if you read their website. So they do make like a 2 to 3 version and then a 30 cal version, but the 30 cal version is designed for 3 inch blackout. I thought, you know what, I'm gonna step that up a bit. So I shot it out of 7 rem mag. Why? Because I bloody well can. I figured if it can handle the concussion of a magnum, it can handle the concussion of pretty much everything else. So when Warwick asked which one I wanted, I said I wanted the 30 cal version. Now the 30 cal version, as I said before, is designed for thread blackout. It comes with a 5 8 24 thread. My Ticker T3X in 7 rem mag has a half inch 28 thread on it. So I just used an adapter. Um, you can buy this from Brownells. It's just a thread adapter that goes from 5 8 down to uh, half inch. Thread that on and here's what I came up with. So shooting it just as the muzzle brake itself, it reduces the recoil a ridiculous amount. And that's obviously going to happen. It's a massive radial ported brake. Radial ported brakes do reduce recoil a hell of a lot. The problem with radial ported brakes is when they're used alone, you do get a lot of the gases going downwards. So if you're shooting off a bench or the back of my ute, as I am in this video, you'll see that there is a lot of gas bouncing off um, the tray and it's quite uncomfortable for the shooter. Now you'll probably notice that I'm squinting a bit because I fired a lot of rounds um, not just the ones that I've filmed, but I did fire a lot of rounds out of this and firing off the tray was very, very uncomfortable. I really didn't like doing it. So by the time I got to doing the filming, it was absolutely smashing my face. So that's why you'll see me squinting. So point to note for just the muzzle brake, if it's radial, like this one is shooting off a bench or off a car, is very uncomfortable. With the jacket on it, it still, in my opinion, reduced the recoil slightly. Now, I don't know whether that is because of the weight of it. You are now adding 200 and something grams to the front of your gun. So the weight of that list on the website is around 230 to 250 grams, depending on which model you get. So is the recoil reduction because we are now adding that weight to the front of the gun? 
I would say potentially because you add weight to the front of the gun, it's gonna reduce muzzle flip, which most people interpret muzzle flip as felt recoil. Muzzle flip and recoil are not really the same thing. Recoil is going directly back into your shoulder. Muzzle flip is going up and pushing the muzzle away from the thing it's resting on, usually a bag. However, I did feel that it did reduce that quite a bit and it definitely did push the sound waves forwards. As the shooter, I didn't get all of the massive concussion. Now, when I shot it, that same rifle without anything on, just as a bare barrel, in the footage you will see, one, there is a shitload more recoil, and two, there are a lot more gases bouncing off the tray of the ute, coming back at me as the shooter, um, and obviously if I had adjacent shooters or if I was freehand shooting and I had a dog underneath me, they would feel that too. I do think that this device does work quite well. Thank you very much to Warrior for sending that out to me. Um, I really do appreciate it. And I hope there'd be more Australian companies who are willing to send me stuff because on the channel, I've lately been doing a lot of Chinese stuff. I'd really, really like to do a lot more Australian stuff. But a lot of Australian companies are pretty tight and they don't really like sending things out to people. So if you're an Australian distributor of something, be it a scope or a rifle or a device, or a something or other in the firearms industry, feel free to send it to me. I'll test it and I'll tell you what I think about it. If you're from a Chinese company, continue sending me stuff because I need content. Anyway, I hope you got something out of that. I will see you next video and hooroo.